Hey everyone, welcome back. Big Al here. Got another thermostat upgrade today. Today we're going to go from a really old school White Rogers thermostat to a Nest thermostat. So the first thing that we're going to want to do before we start working on disassembling this thermostat is go ahead and turn off the correct circuit breaker for the thermostat and furnace, uh, which you'll have to look at uh, that corresponds in your house. So let's go over and shut that one off first. All right, back at the circuit breaker here, and you just want to make sure that you find the correct one. In this case, uh, I've got the furnace, so I go ahead and make sure that I have turned it off because we want to make sure that we don't short anything out as we uh, disconnect and reconnect our new thermostat. So now that we've got that done, we can go back and disconnect our old thermostat. It also goes without saying that if you feel uncomfortable doing any of this or you're not sure which circuit breaker to shut down or don't like working with this, you can always call a qualified technician. But if you even taking your time and making sure that you're careful, this project shouldn't take more than about a half an hour. So to disconnect, all these white thermostats are a little bit different. Uh, this one I've got loosely disassembled already. So the front cover kind of just clips off like this and comes down. And this is pretty interesting. If you've never seen one of these before, this is truly an old style uh, mechanical thermostat. You can see the, the uh, mercury inside there that would adjust as the temperature. And of course you could turn on the air conditioning, but the way that would work is the temperature would move. And if I had the power on, you can actually see a little spark that would happen down here uh, once the air conditioning is turned on. On this particular model, I need to remove uh, these Flathead screws, I could definitely tell it's old. I don't see flatheads used uh, too much anymore on um, devices. And then that's gonna pull off this secondary cover. And then we get to the real meat and potatoes, which are the colored wires that we need uh, to do our installation of the Nest thermostat. There are two screws to note here that mounted into the wall. And oh, we got a dead spider there. So we're gonna be removing this one and this one. We will take each one of these wires out from their location, noting how they're labeled and what they correspond to. You need to pay close attention because um, this you'll reconnect your Nest thermostat in the identical fashion. Uh, the other thing you'll want to be able to do is when you go into the Nest uh, box, there are labels for the wires. If you see my other video, I've used those before. Um, we can put those on the wires before we disconnect them so we don't forget. It's also a great idea to take a picture of this thermostat just in case one of the stickers falls off, you get confused, or you're not sure where things are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing those flathead screwdrivers, or excuse me, screws, and removing the wires. I'll remove this back plate, and then I will be able to start the installation of the Nest thermostat. So I'm just going to go ahead and take inventory, too, of what we've got in the new installation. As I mentioned, there's the labels for the wires. We've got a backing plate. We also have an electrical uh, box backing plate if you have that installation. We don't, so we'll just be using this one with the mounting screws. We've got the backing plate for the nest, which the screws will go into through the holes. There's actually a built-in level right here, so you'll be able to see if this part is straight so that the nest is straight. I have an additional level just to make sure this, this end ends up straight. It comes with a nice screwdriver, so each time you buy a nest, you get another one of these, so that'll help because it has this small flathead uh, screwdriver there. And that's basically what you're going to end up with. So again, let's go ahead and use those labels and start pulling the old thermostat apart. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the old thermostat, and I've used the labels to go ahead and show which uh, wires correspond to, to what. Remember, don't trust the colors of the wire, especially if it's a really old thermostat. I got lucky here in that each of them did correspond to the right color, but what you need to do, if you can see here where it says like RH and W um, and G, these are the ones that are important, what it's hooked into, because that's what it actually corresponds to. And by the way, there's a jumper here between RC and RH, which is the power. And I happen to know from looking at the Nest documentation, which does indicate, uh, the, and this is just in this version of the instructions, nest.com to labels, that if you had um, uh, the jumper, that the jumper is no longer needed and you could use either um, uh, RC or RH as the power on the new backing plate 
Um, so I use our H, which is on the um, bottom right hand side of the backing plate. I'll be hooking up in a minute. But again, verify independently on your own on Nest site uh, the correct wiring diagram. And if you have any questions, you can always call them. Um, I've called them uh, several times before uh, troubleshooting. They're quite helpful um, and quite thorough. Uh, the other thing is, again, the online help seems to be pretty good. So let's go ahead and get the, uh, the wall plate and the uh, backing plate mounted to the wall, which uh, we're going to just be able to go directly into the drywall here. So this is pretty straightforward. There's the built-in level there. And once you get this locked into place, what I try to do is center it on the hole where the wires come out, push the wires through. And as you can see, uh, you can just go ahead and get that uh, level as needed and then just drive, hand drive those screws into the wall. There was no need uh, for any power tools in my case. You do not need to mount this into the stud. The nest is so super light, you don't even need any anchors. Uh, these two screws are definitely going to hold it on the drywall. But if you do happen to hit a stud, it's going to be kind of hard to drive that. So if you want to check to see if the stud's there first, uh, just in case. But uh, otherwise, you'll be able to just um, push those right on through the drywall. So I'm going to finish up tightening those bolts, and then it'll be time to uh, connect these wires into their corresponding location. So if you've gone ahead and labeled them, the way to do that is to press this tab and insert the wire through the hole on the inside. Once it's fully engaged in there, you can let go and that'll lock down on the wire. Um, one of the most difficult parts, believe it or not, of an installation is you have this slight cavity right here is to actually get the wires to sit flush because if you don't, once you mount the nest on top, it will actually sit a little bit cattywampus and it won't be flat and it won't turn properly. So you want to take your time doing each wire, making sure they don't get tangled and kind of routing them in there. But also be careful not to break the insulation because you don't want any of these wires touching and then causing a short once you turn the power back on. So those are the next couple steps. We need to, we need to finish tightening this down, get the wires in there, and then it'll be time to put the nest on and we'll basically be done. All right, so I've gone ahead and inserted the wires and finished tightening it down. I tell you, there couldn't have been an easier nest installation as the one I've got here. Basically a single stage heat and cool. Uh, so there's very few wires to hook up. I've had more where there's been auxiliary heat and common wire um, and other wires that are involved. But again, if you use your old thermostat as the uh, roadmap to installing this one, it should just be connecting the dots to the new one. Everything's tightened up. This thing's not going anywhere. I've got everything flush back in there. This one was pretty easy because there's a, a nice hole to push that back into. So everything's good to go. We're going to go over to the uh, circuit breaker, turn the power back on, connect the nest, and we should be done. Flip the power back on. All right, got the power back on. Come back over here, press the nest on. And there we go. We now have our nest installed and we've got the correct power to it. Uh, at this point, there are must be uh, a thousand tutorials on guiding you through the intuitive menus of the nest itself, uh, including their own documentation. So I won't be redundant and do that as well. But at this point, if you have any troubleshooting, if you get an error message on the nest itself, if it doesn't have power, you're going to want to go back and double check everything. Um, and if you get in a bind, again, call Nest Support. They're going to be able to help you through it. They're probably going to ask you what your old wires are like, and they're going to trouble, uh, send you through troubleshooting. Otherwise, you can go through the menus, connect to your wireless internet, uh, download the app, and away you go. Hopefully, this was helpful in doing a major upgrade from a probably 30-year-old thermostat to a brand-new Nest. Everybody have a great day. Thanks.